Chapter 5, Section 1, Perpendiculars and Bisectors. A perpendicular bisector is a segment, ray, line, or plane that is perpendicular to a segment at its midpoint. We've talked about perpendicular bisectors before, so we're just defining it again. The perpendicular bisector theorem says that if a point is on the perpendicular bisector of a segment, then it is equidistant from the end points. The converse to the perpendicular bisector theorem says that if a point is equidistant from the end points of a segment, it, then it is on the perpendicular bisector of the segment. This example says in the diagram shown, line PQ is the perpendicular bisector of CD. What segment lengths in the diagram are equal? Well, if you notice, they've told us using tick marks that CQ is congruent to QD. They have also shown us using numbers that CT is congruent to TD because they both have a length of 7. The other thing that we can conclude is because P is on the perpendicular bisector of uh, segment CD, we can also say that CP is congruent to DP because, um, remember the theorem said that if a point is on the perpendicular bisector of a line, then any point on that line is uh, equidistant from the segment endpoint. B asks us to explain why T is on PQ. Well, remember PQ is the perpendicular bisector of segment CD. The endpoints C and D are equidistant from point T because they tell us that both of their lengths are 7. So T is equidistant from C and D. So by the converse of the perpendicular bisector theorem, T would be on PQ, or T is on the perpendicular bisector. The next example says, explain why FA equals FB. If you look at this segment AB and the vertical line FG, notice that FG is the perpendicular bisector of segment AB because it is perpendicular to the segment and it is forming a right angle. So because it is bisecting and it is perpendicular, we can say that FG or GF is the perpendicular bisector of AB. Because FG is the perpendicular bisector, we can use the perpendicular bisector theorem and say that F, uh, FA is equal to FB. The angle bisector theorem says that if a point is on the bisector of an angle, then it is equidistant from the two sides of the angle. Something really quickly that I want to make sure that I say is when we are measuring a distance from a point to a segment, the line that is drawn to measure that distance has to be perpendicular to the segment that you're measuring. So if you have a point and a segment that you are trying to measure the distance between, you have to measure it to where the um, length is, is forming a right angle with the side. So from the point to the side, it has to form a right angle. The converse of the angle bisector theorem says that if a point is on the, in the interior of an angle and it is equidistant from the sides of the angle, then it lies on the bisector of the angle. This example says R is on the bisector of angle QPS, and it says um, segment RQ is perpendicular to seg uh, ray PQ, and segment RS is perpendicular to ray PS. Then it asks me to prove that RQ is congruent to RS. I am going to prove this without using the angle bisector um, theorem. However, um, 
you actually could use the angle bisector theorem on this proof, but since we just learned it, I'm going to go around and I'm going to use, um, I'm going to prove that proof basically. Remember when we're writing a uh, um, proof, we need to start with our givens, so rewrite the givens. From there, um, to s prove that RQ is congruent to RS, if you notice, um, we are given an angle that is two angles that are congruent, and then we also, um, if you notice, we have two right triangles that are formed um, by segment RQ and RS. Um, notice we have two right triangles that are formed. So I'm going to say that angle QPR is congruent to angle SPR because of the definition of angle bisector. I am also going to say that angle PQR is congruent to angle PSR because all right angles are congruent. If you notice the two right triangles that I'm trying to prove share the side PR, so I'm going to use the reflexive property and say PR is congruent to PR because of the reflexive property. I now have enough information to say that the two triangles are congruent because of the angle-angle side congruence postulate. Now that I have that the two triangles are congruent, if you think back to chapter 4, um, when we had two congruent triangles, if you look at RQ and RS, which is what we're trying to prove are congruent, those two sides would be corresponding sides of the two triangles. So because the two triangles are congruent, I can go ahead and I can say RQ is congruent to RS because of the fact that corresponding parts of congruent triangles are congruent. The next example says, suppose that in constructing a wooden roof truss, BC and BD are installed so that angle ACB and angle ADB are right angles and that AC equals AD. What can you say about angles CBA and angles ABD? If you notice, we're trying to prove that the two angles formed when a, the whole angle CBD is cut by ray BA. If you notice, A is on the interior of the whole angle ABD a, and it is equidistant from the sides of the angle, so we can um, use that to tell angle CBA and angle AD, ABD are congruent because of the converse of the angle bisector theorem. The next example says in the figure, line CD is, is the perpendicular bisector of AB. What kind of triangle is triangle ABC? If you remember, any point on the perpendicular bisector of a segment is equidistant from the two endpoints. So if line CD is perpendicular to the segment AB, then point C has to be equidistant from point A and point B. That means that at least two sides of my triangle have to be congruent, and a triangle that has at least two congruent sides is an isosceles triangle. Today's assignment is on page 268, it's numbers 8 through 13, 16 through 26, and 30 and 32.